Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, report from Tiger Mountain, here to uh, talk about the uh, recent tragic events in New Zealand and um, the ramifications for uh, the new right politics and also politics and our world in general. Stick around and take a listen. Okay, um, there was a recent um, tragic event that occurred in uh, New Zealand where um, a, a right-wing uh, terrorist from Australia committed an atrocity um, that uh, killed uh, 50 people and injured about 50 more. And um, I think as someone from uh, the politics of the new right, I'd just like to take this opportunity to condemn um, that activity and condemn all um, kinds of uh, violent uh, um, action of that sort. Uh, I've only ever wanted to speak out on politics uh, in a non-violent way, and I think anyone within the new right should also speak out uh, in favour of uh, non-violence and um, political resistance, which is basically speaking out on one's politics and attempting to um, gain an ear for one's politics through uh, being articulate and through... Um, uh, you know, speaking about one's ideas. So I'd just like to say I do condemn what happened in New Zealand, but I would also like to talk about some of the greater ramifications of what happened. So hopefully you can all stick around and listen to some of this. Um, first of all, um, obviously it was shocking to everybody uh, when it happened. Um, uh, I remember some, um, some people sent me... Uh, I did actually see the footage. It was sent to me by email by somebody from the New Right. They'd sent it to me, and I, I watched about a minute of it. Um, it made me feel sick, so I didn't watch anymore, and I did notice that the, the video did disappear from my... Um, uh, uh, like, private message, which is fine, because uh, I don't want to watch that video anymore. I thought it was sickening. Um, it was terrible what happened. Um, so, um, you know, but it did raise a lot of interesting um, kind of... Uh, political ramifications from what happened. I think um, one of the major things is that it was instantly used as an attack upon this rising um, right-wing populist politics that's connected to people like Donald Trump, um, Brexit, um, Marine Le Pen, um, Salvini in Italy, um, the Yellow Vests, um, local politicians in Australia like uh, Pauline Hanson, um, Bob Catter, uh, Fraser Anning and even um, Clive Palmer, that they were sort of being labelled with this kind of right-wing populist um, uh, brush and uh, sort of being accused of somehow being uh, connected to all this. Uh, Pauline Hanson went on, um, I think, I can't remember the name of the journalist, his name's Koch, uh, Channel 7, and um, he was with David Hinch and they viciously attacked her and made out that her politics was a direct influence on what just happened in New Zealand. And I think um, Kochi, or whatever his name is, made this ridiculous claim that the far right is uh, the number one um, cause of terrorism around the world, which is an absolute nonsense. And that's one thing I did want to talk about today, um, is that this is, this is uh, fake news. Um, as far as I know, right-wing terrorism in the last, say, 20 years has been responsible for two major terrorist attacks. One just happened in New Zealand, and the other one happened in... Um, in Oslo, in uh, Anders Bering Brevik. These are the two major right wing, uh, and these were lone wolves, as far as we know, anyway. Um, there was an interesting factor about the guy in New Zealand. I mean, he, he apparently was arrested with uh, another two men and another woman. Who the hell are they? What are their politics? What are their connections? Apparently, they were arrested with him and they've been charged, at least they were on the initial day. But now all we ever hear is this lone wolf narrative, which is kind of interesting in itself. So I think some independent journalists should go, should go out there and investigate. Who are these other two people that have been charged um, with this guy from Grafton, this Australian guy? What's, I can't remember his name. Brenton Tarrant, that's right. I don't even want to say, no, say his name, but there it is. Uh, and, and there was a woman as well. So I'd like to find out who exactly, um, you know, was out, else was involved. What were their politics? Because this guy wrote a manifesto and uh, he spoke about praising China. Um, um, he spoke about praising different unusual elements. Sometimes he praised some things, I guess, from, from the far right or the new right. And other things he, he praised that are clearly like trolls, where he praised Candace Owens, who was like a, an African-American pro-Trump supporter, who clearly was not an inspiration to this guy at all. But he, he claimed that she, he, that she inspired him because he knew liberal media would attack her then if he said this. And that's exactly what happened, of course. Candace Owens is a, is a fantastic um, African-American um, pro-Trump supporter, and she speaks very articulately and has nothing to do with what just happened in New Zealand. So it's, it's been a very strange event. It did feel like a PSYOP. 
uh, it did feel a lot like something that was orchestrated by an intelligence agency. Now, I don't want to get into the whole Alex Jones conspiracy theory element of it just yet, but uh, I did want to talk about what Kochi said about the, that all terrorism kind of, uh, at least a lot of terrorism these days, is, is, is coming from the far right, which is, again, an absolute nonsense because there have only been two main attacks, as I said, Anders Bering Breivik and this new guy in New Zealand. Now, we need to talk about the unfortunate topic of Islamic, radical Islamic uh, terrorism. Now, around the world, there are actual groups, and I'm sure you all know this because you've all watched the news, there are huge groups dedicated to terrorism. Obviously, ISIS and Al-Qaeda are two major ones. ISIS has been causing trouble in um, Syria, in Iraq recently, and um, uh, obviously Al-Qaeda obviously did 9-11 and various other mischief. Then there's the Taliban, of course, and then you've got Boko Haram, and you've got Al-Shabaab, and then you've got, like, Hamas, and you've got Hezbollah. These are organisations with thousands of members whose dedicated purpose is terrorism. You know what I mean? And so for someone like Kochi to go on television, go on Channel 7, and say that the far right... With two lone wolves in the last 20 years, only two lone wolf attacks. When there have been literally thousands upon thousands of attacks by these groups I just mentioned on people from Western civilization and from people from outside of Western civilization is utterly ridiculous. And I think that the way that the government is going through this huge crackdown now um, uh, on far right speech or on people connected to the new right is utterly ridiculous and utterly uncalled for. Um, obviously, we all condemn what happened in New Zealand recently, but like this is a, a ridiculous. Um, state of affairs, uh, what has just been happening, and this kind of media hysteria, and again, it is playing into the globalist media narrative. So, um, I wanted to, I did see a really interesting film the other day called Hotel Mumbai, and people think what just happened in, um, in, in New Zealand is, you know, one of the worst terror attacks. Obviously, it was a terrible attack, but they should go see that new film that's on at the moment called Hotel Mumbai, and in that, um, a group of um, 10 men who are of Pakistani origin, uh, connected to, I can't remember the exact terror group, but you can look it up online, but it's an unusual one. It's an, yet another uh, radical Islamic terror group, but uh, I can't remember its name. It's not, not well known in the West. Um, and they killed approximately 200 people. Um, they hit a, a, a railway station. They hit about two little, uh, like, cafes, and then they walked into this massive, um, the Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai, and then they executed just about everybody they could find, uh, including many Western guests. And this is really well portrayed in this film and is uh, a tribute to the true horror of radical Islamic terrorism. And so I think as a counterbalance to what just happened, people should go see that film and see that this is a terrible kind of... Um, uh, fight that's going on in the world at the moment and yes there was a, a, a far right or extreme right reaction to it that we all condemn and I guess I get, it may not be the last you know because this seems to be some kind of ongoing almost strategy of tension kind of affair that's going on at the moment and it's very dangerous for everybody so um, you know I just wanted to make that statement in relation to New Zealand and um, you know and that's it for the first episode and we'll come back in part two and talk more about uh, this episode in New Zealand and what it means for contemporary politics so Thank you.